Hey guys, so there's been a lot of chatter on the internet regarding how the maker community can go about helping uh, folks in the medical field while the coronavirus begins to run rampant and they begin to run low on supplies. So I'm going to talk to you today about specifically what we found is effective um, and also some other things that other folks are working on. So um, originally we had looked into the idea of uh, printing like plastic masks or oxygen masks um, as well as uh, the valves that actually go with ventilators and things of that nature. Um, for our particular 3D printing process um, that ended up not being super effective. Um, or scalable in the time that we have in the next week or so before it gets really bad. So one way we figured out that we can actually help fairly quickly was by creating uh, basically face shields for medical personnel um, or anybody to wear over their head to prevent folks who may be coughing or if there's an area where there's uh, droplets in the air that might be um, infective, um, basically prevent that from landing on their face directly. So uh, I'm gonna walk you through just kind of the little factory we have set up here and how we're going about uh, making these and where you can source the parts and um, you know our particular design, which I'll uh, link on our site as well. So real quick, um, what we're actually uh, building is basically uh, face shields. Um, they're fairly simple. The print takes uh, less than an hour um, and the total cost is less than a dollar. So real quick I'm just going to demonstrate it for you. Okay so this is our solution. It's a face shield. It's made up of three particular components. The main component being the shield. This is transparency film. You can pick up at your local office supply store. This top part, which we refer to as the crown or the headband, this portion at the moment is 3D printed. We're also actively working on figuring out how to laser cut it. And then we have the elastic portion that acts as the headband or the head strap. You take it like so, put it on, it'll stay as it is, but to really secure it, simply bring the strap around the back and hook it to the hook on the opposite side of the headband or the crown. So once it's on there, you can see it doesn't come off. I hit myself in the face. I can jump up and down and do jumping jacks. It does not move. It's very lightweight, easily movable. Additionally, if any type of uh, vomit or secretion ended up on the face shield and you need to remove it, just the face shield portion, you could grab the tab on either side and effectively just pull it off in a quick release fashion. Just like that. This solution costs less than a dollar to make. The transparency sheet is about 30 cents. The band here probably costs a few cents. The plastic portion that was 3D printed, it took less than an hour to make, about 40 minutes. Uh, only a few cents worth of material. If the standard size covers too much of the face and you want to work with it in conjunction with like an N N95 mask or something or other, you can basically just chop off the portion you don't need. Also, this component, the headband or the crown, is symmetrical in terms of these three points. So you can flip it back and forth whether or not you're left-handed or right-handed in terms of how to actually strap it on. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you guys through the manufacturing process. So like I said, this is a, a super uh, cheap, but simple and effective solution for creating a face shield. So what you'll first need is transparency film. Um, this is the particular brand that we found. We got it at Office Max. We have about 800 sheets, um, so that'll produce about 800 masks. Um, we also have uh, some elastic, um, half inch band material. Um, a quarter inch would work with this design as well or even something like a scrunchie. Um, you'll need a printer or a laser cutter. Um, this design can be fabricated on both. 
Um, you'll need a hole punch. Um, we're just using an iPad uh, just to run a uh, particular printer that we build at our company. Um, and then you'll need some scissors, and this is optional, but uh, we have a lighter, so basically uh, once you chop um, the materials to size, you can kind of uh, seal the end so it's not stringy. So basically what you do is you take your transparency film, um, which you can also substitute with uh, basically a, a three ring plastic clear divider, but this is by far the most effective solution. So you take it in here, and the hole punch, you put it in. So I'm just gonna punch it. Okay, boom, take that off, and I'm gonna transition the camera now so you guys can see me assemble it. Okay, so we have our sheet that we hole punched. There's three holes, okay. We take our 3D printed or laser cut um, headband piece. Basically, uh, put the center hole in first. And then you just manipulate it to get one of the side holes in. And then you bring it around and you hook it into the third hole. Okay, so now we have the shield. So this will actually go on the face um, and actually fit on just fine the way it is now, but we secure it with an extra band. So basically with the band, all we do is we have this hole on the one side, so you just take a piece of uh, elastic band, whatever it is, whether a scrunchie or whatever it might be, um, tie it on one end, basically tie a loop on the other end so that it'll effectively hook in there. And this is also a shortened down version that we chopped off some of the bottom just to make it easier to wear with a N95 mask. So you just put that on, just hold it on one side, you take the other part, bring it around, and it hooks on just like that. And again, like I can jump up and down and do jumping jacks. It doesn't come off my head. I can move it all around. I can hit myself in the face and it doesn't come off. Um, but again, it has the same quick release mechanism. So in case something is on my face, um, I can basically just take this tab, move it forward, and all three sheets will come off. And then you can dispose of this. It's less than a dollar to make. Um, and if you go to your local department store um, and you have a 3D printer at home or a laser cutter, you can basically acquire um, all the materials you need to build them and give them to your local um, family members or uh, medical professionals. So a couple things just to recap. Um, these I got from Office Max. Um, the sheets were $34, uh, or the sheets were $34 for 100 packs, so that's about 30 cents each. Um, this elastic material from our local supplier is about seven cents a yard. Um, you only need about uh, six inches um, to actually uh, tie the, or create the strap for the mask. Um, hole punch, had it on hand, easy. Uh, plenty of uh, plastic material to print on the 3D printer. Uh, it takes less than an hour to make. I think it's about 40 minutes um, at 0.3 millimeter layer height. Um, and uh, it's a simple build, doesn't consume a lot of material, so you can make a lot of them constantly um, over and over and over again. If you wanted to make these at scale, um, 3D printing is great, but the fastest way you can probably make these at scale is using a laser cutter on a basically desktop laser cutting system. Um, that cuts Lexan, you can effectively cut um, 10 of these out of a 12 inch, 12 by 24 inch sheet. So um, you could probably make um, easily 10 of these an hour, uh, if not many, many more using just a standard laser cutter. And I understand some people may take issue um, with the open top. Um, regarding that, we, you know, it could be closed. We'll have the design files up if you would like to close it and figure out a different solution. But we would recommend wearing like a, a hairnet or a baseball cap or something like that. Um, that would be much more effective than just closing this little plastic part. Um, because if you're wearing a hairnet, anything that comes up and over, um, you know, hopefully would get caught there. If, or if you're wearing a hat, it would get caught on it as well. So a couple additional comments. In terms of design parameters, what we design around is, one, it had to be super cheap um, and the material is easily sourceable. Um, so again, this is less than a dollar to make. Um, the most expensive thing on here is this uh, transparency film, which costs about 30 cents. It has to be uh, quick to make on readily available um, equipment that exists. 
So whether it's a 3D printer or a laser cutter, um, this is something that can be made in less than an hour very easily with minimal material utilization. Another thing is that it had to stay on the head. Um, you know, it had to strap on so that whatever vigorous activity uh, the individual wearing it is performing, that it would work. Additionally, um, it couldn't fog up while they're working. So that was another design consideration with the open top here. Um, the reason we went with that is, you can actually see it a little better there, um, is because it actually allows the moisture and the heat as you're talking and breathing heavily, um, you know, and sweating, um, that evacuates up. So even as I'm talking and trying to fog this up, it isn't getting fogged up. Um, so it will not fog up um, while you're working with patients or whatever you might be doing. Uh, additionally, um, it had to be very visible. So we chose transparency film because it's very visible. I can read a standard eye test while wearing it at three or four feet away off of my phone, um, no problem. So reading uh, prescription bottles or reading whatever equipment you may have to read won't be a problem either. Uh, additionally, we're trying to effectively build upwards of 800 of these. Those are materials that we have readily on hand. We have uh, folks who have laser cutters um, who we're working with as well. So whether you agree with our solution or not, um, our goal is to do whatever we can in our power to hopefully uh, help the folks out there on the front line that are trying to uh, keep people alive. Yeah, it's crazy. Good luck and stay safe.